To our developing story this afternoon, broken by Andrew Clennell, the Minister for Regional Development, Territories and Local Government, has denied misleading the Parliament over dividends paid out on her husband's shares. Yesterday, Christy McBain was asked whether she or her husband had received any dividend from shares she had been forced to sell after she discovered the share ownership was in breach of the Ministerial Code of Conduct. Here's a reminder of what she said. Did the minister or her husband receive any dividends from shares they held while the minister was in breach of the Prime Minister's Ministerial Code of Conduct? I give the call to the Minister for Regional Development, Local Government and Territories. No. But as Andrew reported earlier, the ASX records show Ms McBain's husband did receive a dividend of 14 cents per share distributed by the Australian Foundation Investment Company on August 30. According to parliamentary records, that's the day before she sold her shares. Let's bring in the Shadow Treasurer, Angus Taylor, who joins me live from Goulburn. Angus Taylor, do you believe the Minister misled the Parliament yesterday? Well, it's clear there's questions to answer here, Kieran. I mean, uh, what you've reported, and I can't verify that other than to, to take your reports at face value at this point, but uh, what's been reported by Andrew Clennell suggests there are real questions to answer. Did she mislead the parliament? Of course, um, that's, that's pretty serious. Uh, and uh, she needs to answer those questions in full. Her argument to Andrew in, in a statement was that she was never in breach, so therefore she could answer no to the question as put by your colleague in the parliament yesterday. Does that stack up? I think there's some pretty serious questions to answer here. As I said, Kieran, um, I, I'm, you know, again, I have only seen the reporting as uh, as you've put it out, but the truth of the matter is um, that. Uh, she held those shares, there's no doubt about that, um, and she's not denying that. She, she's made it very clear in uh, past interviews that she'd made a mistake on that, uh, and it seems now that she received those dividends while still holding the shares. So there's some really significant questions here to answer. Let's turn to the budget, which is what we... Uh were originally obviously going to discuss off the back of that final budget outcome yesterday. Um, do you accept that the factors that saw the boost to the bottom line for the last financial year are temporary? Oh, absolutely not. I mean, you've got to remember, for the, 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 uh, fr from the moment the New South Wales and Victorian uh, uh, states unlocked back in October last year, and it's dim distant memory for many of us, but that's when it happened. From that moment on, we ran a cumulative surplus through to the end of June, we now know, from the data we got yesterday. Now, why did that happen? It's because people went back to work. A huge surge in income tax. I don't expect people to go back into a lockdown anytime soon. If they do, of course, the budget will deteriorate, but that's, that's not what we expect. And so the budget is in an extremely strong position. I mean, to put this in perspective, we've seen a $50 billion or $48 billion improvement in the budget, $115 billion reduction in the debt. Uh, we, we saw a surplus again in June after a very significant surplus in May and, as I say, a cum cumulative surplus from November. Uh, and the interesting thing about this is the improvement in the budget was across the board. It wasn't just commodity prices. Uh, it was the income tax, as I said. It was a very significant reduction in expenses on welfare and health. And you would expect that as people go back to work and we move beyond the pandemic. We didn't have those expenditures we'd had in the past. Now, the truth is, if the budget deteriorates from here, that's a choice from Labor. That's their choice. They can run the budget over a cliff. They can run the economy over a cliff. But they have inherited an extremely mm. strong economy, an extremely strong budget. I have never seen a Treasurer so miserable that they'd found uh, $50 billion and they'd reduced debt by $150 billion. The truth of the matter is it happened on our watch, uh, Kieran. That's why he's miserable. The better off Australia is, the unhappier Jim Chalmers is. And... Uh, this when tells you, you look at those commodity his prices, don't at this which, moment seem to be aligned with the interests of Australia. But the commodity prices can't be banked on for staying at those record levels for the foreseeable future. You'd, you'd at least concede that. So we still have a structural well, well, deficit, in the budget, don't we, with massive expenditure coming down the line? 
Well, there will be massive expenditure if Labor gets its way. There's no doubt about that, Kieran. I mean, this is a choice now. You see, the thing is, Labor wants massive expenditure and, and they want to tax more. Uh, so the best way to do that is to say the current situation is terrible, but it's not. Um, and, you know, Jim Chalmers and, and the Prime Minister will talk the Australian economy down every day of their week. They'll talk the budget down every day of the week so they can tax you more. That's what they want to do. That's their plan. Make no mistake about it. Um, and the best way to do it is to talk the place down. Now, I think that's really... Uh, that, that, that's, that's a really poor showing from them uh, because we do ha have a very strong position. Australians have done extremely well. Compared to other countries in the world, this is remarkable. An absolutely remarkable set of circumstances. Um, and if Labor just wants to spend more and tax more, they should say that. That's a, that's a policy but choice. You, for you them. say that it's Labor uh, that wants to, to spend the Australian and people. tax. But let's look at some of the big ticket items which were in place under your government just a few months ago the defence expenditure with AUKUS, the aged care changes which were going to come about as a result of the. Royal Commission, you've got mm. the NDIS program, which is bipartisan. This is all bipartisan. So and, and, it, and it was all budgeted. There is a, and it was all budgeted. But there is a structural, <laughs> there's a structural deficit in the budget because it's not... We're not going well, to return to, to surplus anytime soon. Well, there's a structural deficit whilst Labor's in power, it seems. That's very clear. Um, that's what they intend to do is make sure we're in deficit because they want to spend more. And ultimately, they, they want them to be able to tax more. Um, that's very clear from the comments that are coming from the Treasurer and the Prime Minister. But look, all of that was budgeted. We, we, we left a budget in March from which there has been remarkable improvement. As Chris Richardson pointed out today, a billion dollars a day um, that was the improvement on the position. And the reason is this. Um, we deliberately worked our way through that, those tough pandemic circumstances to have a, have a rapid recovery, a V-shaped recovery, as it was called. Um, and it worked. It is so clear now from the data that's come out, the plan worked. Now, the, rea the reality of that is it left us with a budget situation which was truly remarkable. Um, uh, expected budget of just under 80 billion ended up closer to 30 billion, debt down 115 billion. Um, there is barely a country in the world that can boast that kind of extraordinary outcome, but we have a treasurer who doesn't want that because his plan always was to spend more and tax more. Uh, so you don't accept easy, that there's it is a, easier to do. You that. don't accept that there is a structural deficit in the budget, which was delivered by Josh Frydenberg and and now to be carried on by Jim Chalmers with those massive expenditure items, with an ageing population, with the defence, the NDIS, and other expenditure items only set to grow. You don't concede there's a, well, a structural well, Kieran, deficit. Well, just look at, the, look at the facts. We laid out we laid out a budget. We laid out a budget back in March which dealt with all of these issues, uh, from which by the end of, by the election, and indeed by the end of June, a month afterwards, we ended up in an absolutely remarkable situation, far better than in the budget. And all Jim Chalmers wants to do now is, is talk it down. All he wants to do is talk it down. Uh, and the truth of the matter is, that's because he has a different plan. And Labor, as always, when they get into government, they want to spend more. There's a long queue of people asking for money, uh, ministers, invested interests, asking for money, and that will create a structural deficit. Make no mistake about it, I'm sure it will. Uh, but what he's also doing is looking at where he can find some tax. Now, the easiest way to make an argument for taxing people more is to say the situation is terrible, I need to tax you more. But the truth of the matter is he has been left with a strong position. If he then drives the budget off a cliff, drives the economy off a cliff, that is on him. That is their choice. But they have been left with this remarkably strong position, for which I think uh, they should so show uh, more positivity towards the extraordinary work of the Australian people in getting back to work, getting businesses up and running, getting things happening again post-pandemic. We did it like almost no other country in the world. Joining me live from Goulburn today, Shadow Treasurer Angus Taylor, thanks.